it can't bring it. I want to know your name because your name is above every name. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. I want to know your name. And sometimes God is not looking at your badness. He wants to know, do you want to know the name? Because there is a name. Precious name. Oh, Jesus. There is a name. There is a name. I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music to my ears. The greatest name on earth. And oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, sir. How I love Jesus. Yeah, I've been in the bar tar. I've been in the club. I used to look at so much porn that I couldn't even see straight. Good God Almighty. But oh, how I love Jesus. I, 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 there have been times I've been so drunk. I didn't know if I'd ever be sober again. But oh, how I love Jesus. And yes, 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 I've slept with some women that was not my wife. But oh, how I love Jesus. And sometimes you find yourself wondering, how can I go through all that mess? And God raised me up again. And 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 you messed up, Peter. I know you denied me three times. Oh, but feed my sheep in the house. I know you cussed when they tried to identify you and me. But feed my sheep in the house. God will heal you somebody that you don't expect him to use. Don't you know, Lord, she used to be a slut. Don't you know, Lord, he used to be a crackhead. Yeah, I know all of that. Zechariah, somewhere in Zechariah, it talks about how Joshua, oh God, clad in filthy garments, he stood before the presence of God, clad in filthy garments, and the devil was there to accuse him, just like the devil is there to accuse some of us, don't you see how dirty she is, don't you see how nasty she is, Lord, don't you remember what she did back in 1988, she used to sleep with the whole football team, and the Lord would say, say to the Lord, rebuke you, cause that's my prophet, I don't care, and she slept with every single one of the Buffalo Bills, that's my prophet, that's my evangelist, I'm gonna use her for my glory, say yeah, say yeah. was never the same. The angel smote him in his thigh. And from then on, Jacob walked like this. Yeah, we were articulate. We were wonderful. We were beautiful when we were out in the world. And some of us look good now serving the Lord. But somewhere in our lives, there's got to be a limp. Oh, Jesus! Hallelujah! Mm. I said there's got to be a limp. Yeah. Paul called it infirmities. And he said, I'd rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. We got all these preachers. I love every single one of them. But the system wants you to believe that your anointing is in a college degree. We want to show everybody how academic we are, how erudite we are. You got to have the, the you got to have the robe with the three stripes on it, brother. Because that's the one that lets everybody know that you got a PhD. Some of us ain't got nothing but an honorary doctorate. And it's nice that they give you that. Amen, I got one. But you have never heard me come up in here and call myself Dr. Jackson. You know why? Because I got a limp. And I heard Jake say, he said, I do not trust, I do not work with, I do not employ anyone who does not have a limp. Oh, Jesus. Because a limp signifies your dependence on God. A limp signifies the fact that you understand that without him I can do nothing. A limp signifies the fact that I've been to the wilderness. I got into a wrestling match with God and he broke me. And some of us, we think that we can be all hard and cold and, and, and muscular and, and I'm just all into my own intellect. It's about what I know. Baby, don't you know I'm five better Catholic, but God can't use you. Huh? MS, MS, BS, PhD. Huh? Y'all know what BS stands for, right? And the MS be more of same. PhD piled higher and deeper. Y'all look at 
that tomorrow. But God said, I don't want all of that stuff. I don't want your good looks. They mean, I'm, I'm just, I, you know, it messes me up. You know, I go on, I go on the internet, go on Facebook, and you got all these preachers, man. You know, everybody's just so into themselves. Jesus. You know, see how cute my glasses are? <laughs> you, know, just, you know, them brothers, you know, I don't know what the, what it is with brothers. We don't look like men anymore, you know. We take these pictures and, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> It's wonderful that God has raised you up and given you nice clothes and all that stuff. But that's flesh. That's what it is. Huh? I want to break you till you come to the point where your ministry is more than just a display of flesh. Nobody cares about your new suit. Nobody cares about what you wore on Easter. What we want to know is, is your lamp connected to the vessel? And do you have some oil in there? Because it's the oil that sets the captive free. Of the green. It's the oil, my God, that heals the sick. It's the oil that raises the dead. It's the oil, my God, my God, that calls them out of darkness into the marvelous light. Aren't you tired of just having a good sermon and everybody walks out the same way that they came in? I need the oil. Not about what I'm wearing. I need the oil. So God says, I got to break you. I got to fix you to the point where you understand that you cannot walk in your own strength. It's not about your weed, okay? Hey Amen. I'm glad you got your hair fixed. That's wonderful. I'm glad you were able to buy that new hat. That's real nice. But are you anointed? That's real nice. I'm glad you did get a new dress. My God, you was wearing the same one and we got tired of looking at that. So I'm glad you got a new dress. But did you spend any time on your knees last night? And uh, John 12, 23 and 25, somebody. He just told me to just throw this stuff out and go home. A broken church. He said that when they brought the Ark of the Covenant back from the Philistines, while we get John 12, when they brought the Ark of the Covenant back, amen, the Bible says they put it on a new ox cart. Brand new ox cart. They painted it nice and red. <laughs> new tires on it. You know, we had a ox cart fun. You know, the arrow went all the way up. And they bought their cart. They paraded their cart around. Hey, see our cart? Our cart's bigger than your cart. Our cart got more oxes than your cart. Our cart got better colors than your cart. Our cart is shinier than your cart. But the problem was that God had told them that that was not the way that you carry the presence of God. And see, we think that our man-made mechanisms, because they're so wonderful and, and, and technological and, 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 and modern and stuff, that it's all right to carry the... God won't... God, God will be pleased with this. Huh? God is pleased when we do it the way he said do it. Sometimes the way that he said do it, we look old timey. And sometimes the way that he said do it, don't look as modern as theirs. Sometimes the way that he said do it, look raggedy. Sometimes the way that he said do it, it's not fit for TV. But he said do it that way. Not the way your mind got it fixed up, do it that way. Huh? Not the way the next folks are doing it. Do it the way I said do it. But the problem is we're running around bragging about our carts. Huh? And then they look at the man that ain't got no cart. He's just carrying the presence of God on his shoulders. The way God said carry it. On his shoulders. He ain't got no cart. How can he be an apostle? I don't want no cart. I want to carry the presence of God the way he said to carry it. Because if I carry the presence of God the way he said, he said to carry it, the one thing about when they hand it on the cart is it almost tried to help and steady the car and steady the presence of God and they died. So that tells me that it does not matter how pretty it is, when you carry the presence of God the wrong way, the only thing it can minister is death. The only thing that can happen is folk die. You look good, but you're dead. Oh, you got the nice, wonderful blue carpet, but you're 